Folks, if I'm gonna tell you about what happened last fall, the only place to do that is up in the bucket. So let's go up. I really am super excited to show you guys everything that I built last fall. It was an absolutely whirlwind week that this structure went up. And yeah, I said a week. Yeah, yep, it was a week. October 16th to October 22nd. What happened to the 30 day challenge? Well, I condensed it into six days because I had to. Now, it wasn't exactly from foundation to sheathing. I had the outside walls of the first floor done. So let me set the stage for that week. I had been waiting on building material for about three weeks at this point. The beams for this floor were just not coming in and I had taken the time to tear into the existing house, which you saw in a previous video. So I'm coming off of a week of the most grueling demolition project that I've ever done. I had to go back to work on October 23rd. The materials arrive, my dad comes into town, and it's go time. And I didn't want to leave the structure in this half-finished state because my house was exposed and open to the outside. It was just covered with plastic. I had those six days in order to build as much as I could, and that's what we did. So. Let me show you the slideshow of the pictures my dad was taking and I'll kind of voice over and, and step you through what each day was about. Day one, October 16th, we start installing these beams. They're laying on the ground outside I swing over with the bucket truck. Dad hooks on a strap. I pick it up, swing it over, set it on top of the wall over here, set it in the joist hanger. Boom, we go get the next one, the next one, the next one, and get all the beams in. Then I went through each joist hanger. I put in my screws, nailed it on the top plate on the other side, and then we started working on the tongue and groove ceiling. This is one inch tongue and groove uh, it's got a bevel on one side and a flat profile on the other. I chose to put the bevel up because I like the look of the flat profile for the ceiling. This will provide a lot of structure for the floor, but I have another subfloor going on top of that. And in between those two, I'm gonna have radiant tubes and then electrical utilities and probably a layer of home soap for sound deadening because these types of ceilings, you can literally hear every footstep. So that was basically October 16th. It was the, the beams and the floor, and Dad had just come into town, so we spent a little time hanging out and just kind of getting our heads around what was coming up the next day. So day two, because we had completed this floor, we were able to use it as a platform to remove the wall that was still attached to the existing house. We cut all the nails on the bottom plate, hooked onto it with the crane, and then hoisted it out of there, swung it out into the yard, set it down. We just picked this wall up out of the house, and I've got the bucket truck extended pretty much all the way out to the side. I'm gonna pick that wall right up out of there, and we swung it around. After we got that wall out of the way, we really needed to seal up the house. This is a gap that was left when I raised the roof, and so we needed to create an OSB and styrofoam patch basically to fill that hole. We also used the bucket truck to hoist up some of the materials to build a stud wall in the end of the house, which was still totally open, and then we covered that with plastic. And that's the end of the second day. Up next, walls. So after we got the floor in place, we started building these outside walls. We built all the walls on the deck, sheathed them on the deck, taped them, and then stood them up. So these walls here are the inside wall of a double wall construction. 
and the inside wall for my envelope is the air barrier. That's why we had to tape that plywood. So the first wall we started with was this end wall. And when I built it, I chose to leave the window out and sheath over it. And then I cut this window in after the wall had already been built. This was the next wall I built and I built it all on the deck and stood it up all in one piece with the bucket truck. This wall has a beam embedded in it, which carries the load down through the structure from the two beams that are sitting on it. Standing that long wall up was the end of day three. And on the fourth day, we started to build the walls around the corner. And on this end part of the addition, these were pretty straightforward, although they did have four windows in them. And those I built all well down on the deck, sheathed the walls, and taped the walls and then stood them up and tacked them in place. Day five, we started out by putting the beams in place. These are made of two by 12s, sandwiched with three quarter inch CDX, glued with construction adhesive, and I nailed the heck out of these things. So these beams are what carry the load down through the structure from the entire roof section and the ceiling and the floor of the loft room above us. We started out by putting the beams in place. Picked them up with the bucket truck, set them down on the top plate on the wall, and nailed them in. And then we're able to start hanging these ceiling joists. Basic process there, we hung all the joist hangers all at once, then we cut all the ceiling joists, dropped them in place, screwed them in. the ceiling joists were all cut, we started cutting our rafters. It had a rafter tail cut on this end, and on the other end, we left it square. The top of the rafters are connected directly to the two by six wall of the loft area. So by the end of day four, we had all of our beams in place, all of the ceiling joists, all of the rafters on this side, and both of the loft walls standing straight up. So the beginning of day five started by cutting all the rafters for that side and installing them, and then building a template and creating our trusses for the loft roof. After the trusses were made, we basically stood them up on the top plates of these walls and screwed them down. After getting these trusses installed, we switched right over to doing sheathing. We wanted to get this place weathered in as fast as possible, and we figured getting the main section done first would give us the greatest chances of that. So my buddy came over, crawled up on these rickety trusses, and got all the sheathing installed, which really tightened up this upper roof. So I would bring sheathing up to him with the bucket truck, grab the measurements for the next piece, go down, hop out of the bucket, cut the piece, bring it back up, get, set it down on the roof for him. He nailed it in place, I grabbed the measurements, so on and so forth. My buddy had to take off and my father finished sheathing this side. Um, my buddy actually came back later at like eight o'clock at night and we ended up 
building a template for the trusses over the bedroom and assembling all those and kind of standing them up on the wall upside down and we left them there like that that night. The trusses for the bedroom section were fairly simple. They're a collar tie along the bottom, which doesn't exactly make them trusses. They're more like rafters, but we built them in one piece with a plywood or OSB triangle on the peak just to kind of hold them together and simplify installation. The OSB triangle doesn't really provide any strength at all. It merely holds them together while we could stand the rafters up. And that was the end of day six. On day seven, we started right away at 7 a.m. and we stood all of those trusses we made up and assembled the roof over the bedroom. hours was trying to figure out how to frame this gable extension of the roof and how these valleys would work and we finally got that done and started to sheathe this section. Now that probably took us longer to sheathe this one section and really just the valleys than it did to sheathe the entire roof because we had some complex we had some complex stuff going on and probably wouldn't frame it like this again um, so we ended up getting the valleys sheathed and then we continued sheathing out over the bedroom and that completed all of the sheathing for the roof section of this whole addition. And that moment kind of marked the, the end of that crazy week. all the sheathing we were blown away at the progress we made in that one week and I was so happy that we had gotten it to a point where at least the majority of the rain would be shed off of the structure that was it that was the seven days of adventure of mayhem of happiness of yelling and screaming and upsetness. Not really. It's important to mention there's no way I would have been able to do this alone. Thanks, Dad, so much. It, uh, it really made all the difference in the world, and, and we would have had a much different winter without a roof on this place, and uh, probably without an addition on this place if you hadn't come. So. so, yeah, that's how you can build an addition in a week. It's not that hard to see. I just followed these simple, clear instructions, and you're going to be fine. All right. Up next, the craziness that happened after we got this thing built. To include rain coming down through my bedroom lighting cans at 3 o'clock in the morning. If you haven't already, yeah, here it comes. Please like and subscribe down below and there's also a little buttony thing that you can click and it like it makes sure that you get every single email every video that i post you get an email that's what you want yeah i know anyway stay tuned thanks for watching